life for African Americans in the United States at the beginning of the 20th century a glance in the past. Life for African Americans back during the turn of the 20th century was tough but exciting, because slavery was all but over and schools were available to blacks in their own neighborhoods. But things must have looked pretty good to people in those times merely because they weren't slaves like their grandfathers and grandmothers. People was thinking of opening businesses and people had heard of the jobs in the North thanks to the industrial boom. Many, many blacks headed North in search of work and a better life. Around that time the situation in the South for blacks was not looking good though they were free they were still subject to working for whites because they had no land of their own. So moving North was the only solution for many of them. In 1900, the plight of African Americans in the South was bleak. Thirty-five years after the abolition of slavery, the overwhelming majority of African Americans toiled in agriculture on land that they didn't own. Nine out of ten African Americans lived in the South, almost the same proportion as in 1860, and three out of four were tenant farmers or sharecroppers. Digital Par 1-2 The South was also very cruel when it came to education. At the beginning of the 20th century, some 44.5% of all African American adults were illiterate. In 1915, South Carolina spent one twelfth as much on the education of a black child as on a white child. In 1916, only 19 black youths were enrolled in public high schools in North Carolina and 310 were enrolled in Georgia. Digital Par 3 Amongst all of this, blacks still managed to do some notable things. According to an article on ThoughtCo.com called African American Timeline 1900 to 1909, it lists some of these accomplishments, though I'll only mention a couple. James Weldon Johnson and E. John Rosamond Johnson write the lyrics and composition for Lift Every Voice and Sing in Jacksonville. FL Within Two Years, the song is considered the African American national anthem. Lewis Part 2, Wow. As a musician I am extremely envious because that is a musician's dream, to have their music cherished and passed down from generation to generation, and to do this in 1900 before blacks even fought to end segregation is a pretty big deal. A couple of years later W.E.B. Du Bois wrote and had published a book that dealt with the issues black people faced during this time. W.E.B. Du Bois publishes The Souls of Black Folks. The collection of essays explored issues concerning racial equality and denounced Washington's beliefs. Lewis Par 4 I can get over this one because I am not a writer but I will note the great thing that this man did for our community. I'm sure it inspired people to strive for something greater than the status quo. The book had more uses. Co-workers of his urged him to complete the book thinking it was going show black people's coming up since being released from slavery. W.E.B. Du Bois then a sociology professor at Atlanta University, was approached by Thomas Calloway, an African-American lawyer who called for black participation in the exposition, to illustrate progress made by black Americans since emancipation. Dubois, Calloway and Daniel A. P. Murray, a son of freed slaves and assistant librarian of Congress, compiled books, manuscripts, artifacts and some 500 photographs of people, homes, churches businesses and landscapes that d5 stereotypes fisher part 2 i should read this book it would be interesting to see in the culture now the impact his book actually had in conclusion i realize that people make their own decisions in life and though we are a people a community and a race it is ultimately up to the individual to excel or be marginalized thank you for watching and please like and subscribe